All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, I wanted to do a quick shop tour. So this is sort of like our garage uh, workspace, uh, but it's also our carport. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, uh, about the shop. Uh, also, because I realized that I've never done a shop tour. So I wanted to share that with you guys but also because we're gonna be moving out of this space pretty soon and um, I wanna show that process as well. So let's get started. Let me turn on the other light. It didn't turn on all the way. There we go. All right, so first I wanna start over here on this side. So let's move over to this side. Uh, what I wanna show you guys here is that even though this is a three car garage, this space normally is clear for when we have winter storms and as a matter of fact there's a storm going on right now so we've been getting a lot of snow normally we would park the car in here but as you can see we have a bunch of stuff here what this is it's also a bunch of supplies because we're finishing our basement and this is all going to be for the basement uh, but normally it's clear and i will have lumber over there uh, against the wall and maybe some plywood that kind of sits over here on this side uh, But it's a shared space. You know, I have some cabinets over here on this side uh, some storage down underneath uh, The boys bikes that you know, we keep up there So this is just more of a you know general purpose for everybody to use and it's not dedicated to the shop So let's turn around and then I'll show you the other side uh, And we'll show you uh, we'll just kind of go around the shop, but I want to start right here at the miter station. Um, what this, so this miter station I've had since like 2006, uh, earlier than that actually. I've had it for a long time and they're, you know, they're well made. Uh, they've gone everywhere with me. We've been to like four or five different homes that they've uh, come with me. And uh, the only change that I've made to this station is that I used to have a DeWalt miter saw. It was the uh, DWS 715. Uh, and then I decided to upgrade to this Bosch 10 inch. And I upgraded because this one has the sliding um, feature. Uh, I think they call it the glide. Um, either way, I needed it uh, because I wanted to have a larger cut capacity. And this one has like a 10 or 12 inch cut capacity. Uh, which is great. It's what I needed. These cabinets uh, are great, but I'm not utilizing the way I probably should utilize them. It's filled with a bunch of junk. Uh, some of them are just pretty empty. If you come around over here and take a look, it's just kind of random stuff. This one is actually empty, <laughs> partly. And so I'm not utilizing it the way it should be utilized. Um, and that's my fault. Um, but that's something that uh, I want to get a little bit more organized once we get into the new shop. So let's go over here to the back cabinet because this is where I keep most of my paints, spray paints, uh, cleaning supplies, uh, mineral oil. I have a bunch of stuff. Again, it's not the most organized. I have all my paints up there, so that looks a little bit organized, but it's just pretty random. But it's there. It provides a little bit of you know shelf space so that I could put all my all my stuff in there. Um, but that's what that is. Um, back here is um, access to where we have our trash bins and stuff. So we have to kind of roll them in through here um, to get the trash bins outside. That's why there's this gap, which is just like perfect enough to get those bins uh, through here and out to the sidewalk and back in. So, all right, let's move over to this side. Um, I'm gonna move this out of the way just so that we don't trip on it, but I will talk a little bit about this uh, soon. But let's come over here. All right, so this is our jointer. Uh, this is a six inch, six inch jointer. Um, I picked this one up from Craigslist a long, long time ago, and um, I got it for like a hundred bucks. Great deal. Um, it was in good condition. The guy was just getting rid of all his stuff, so I picked it up, and um, and it worked out. What I didn't like about it is that it had the straight knives, 
which I needed to upgrade. And if you come in a little bit closer, uh, you could see that I upgraded to the helical cutter head and this is a six inch. So even though I picked this one up for a hundred bucks, the uh, cutter head was about $300. So, uh, but it works great. Uh, it, I, I need a larger cut capacity. So I may end up getting like an eight inch jointer, um, but th that'll be a future upgrade. So now let me come over here to this side. And as you can see, I'm moving this trash bin around as well as some other stuff because this space is just so congested. Um, but that just kind of gives you an idea of the limited space that we have here. It wasn't always like that, but once we got the CNC and the laser, um, these machines are super massive. So you can imagine um, this cut into a lot of the space um, that we had in here. So um, let me talk about the laser. This is a Laguna 100 watt uh, laser. This has been the work for, workhorse for a long time. It is a two by three foot cut capacity or lasering capacity. We cut a lot of our templates uh, on here as well as do a lot of engraving. And this has been in the Wood Green Junkie family for about two years, maybe two and a half years. Uh, it's been great and I love it. I'm gonna keep it at, you know, later down the line, I may upgrade to something um, different and if I do it'll be more for like you know engraving purposes or will be more dedicated to engraving or maybe cutting but uh, this one will stay uh, with us as well uh, here on this side is our 2x3 CNC um, this is the I2R A23 this thing is a monster I love it it has a liquid cooled 3 horsepower spindle um, you know, four inch dust collection and all that good stuff. Um, this is where we cut all of our acrylic, uh, all of our base plates, our insert plates. Um, most of the products that we have, um, they're cut on this machine. And if you come in a little bit closer, you'll see that we have this air weight vacuum table. Um, this thing is freaking awesome. Basically what it does is um, it sucks, uh, it creates this suction, it's a vacuum table, and it holds down your workpiece along with this grid. This grid is essentially a MDF um, that's surfaced, and once you surface it, you add this tile gasket. The tile gasket is by um, All Star CNC. And what it does is with that vacuum, it allows uh, some of that or a lot of that suction to go through these holes um, and it holds down your workpiece. For us, it's acrylic, but you could easily hold down uh, wooden, wooden um, uh, planks or, or, or sheets or whatever, plywood as well. And you don't have to worry about clamping it down and all that stuff. You just lay it on here once you turn on the, the pump and it holds it down nice and tight. So uh, super great uh, vacuum table to have along with the CNC. Again, this is the workhorse and I freaking love it. So now let's move over to this side. Um, so this is the laptop that um, controls the CNC. We use uh, UC CNC software. I like using UC CNC because I could visually see what's going on as far as the progress of the cuts that it's making. Um, I know you could use the pendant. I don't like using the pendant because um, I'm more visual. I like to see what's going on with the pendant. You just kind of make select your file, press run, and then it'll run. But um, I like to visually see on the laptop what's going on. So that's what we have here. Um, back here, we have another cart. Now this cart was meant more for a, you know, have all your tools that you're using that day uh, or for whatever project and you just kind of roll that around with you as you're working on your project. Uh, that turned out to be more of a catch-all, you know, tray, like a large tray for all the tools. It We still utilize it, but I just 
we're not rolling it around. I just come over here, grab whatever we need, and then just kind of take it back. And often we just kind of start throwing everything there. And, you know, that's just the way it works right now. Again, it's because we don't have enough space to be rolling around this cart. Um, so that's that. And then let's move over here to the uh, table saw. <clears throat> so this is the Laguna Fusion uh, F2. This is the one and three quarter horsepower uh, uh, table saw. It's wired for 120 volts, uh, but we could upgrade this to 240, which I may do. The table saw right now, it's sort of low on the priority list to upgrade, but we are looking to upgrade it at some point, maybe go into, uh, you know, get into like a three horsepower. I don't know which one. I it, we might stick with Laguna, I don't know. Uh, I've been looking at the Harvey table saws and those look pretty nice, but uh, that's gonna be an upgrade for the future uh, once we're in, in the new space. Um, so that's the table saw. The big upgrade that we are making is our dust collection. Now this is a uh, the dust collector from Harbor Freight and it's, it's done a great job well, I say great, but it's, it's done a decent job at collecting all the dust. It's not perfect, uh, but it does what we needed to do right now. When I, when, when I created this dust collection, it's never been fully, um, I guess, thought through or all the duct work hasn't been run throughout the shop. Basically what it's connected to right now, it's the CNC and the table saw and it gives us access to one flex hose, which I'll show you in a little bit. But with those three lines, uh, we kind of run dust collection to all the, all the other machines. Um, and in the new space, I wanna avoid having this setup. So one, we're gonna upgrade from this sort of DIY dust collection to a Oneida Dust Gorilla Pro, which is gonna be a huge improvement. Um, I've heard nothing but great things. As a matter of fact, I already purchased the machine. Uh, it'll be delivered in the next couple weeks to the new space and uh, we're gonna get it set up. I'll film as much as I can and give a review. Although it doesn't need any more reviews. It has all the reviews on YouTube. Go check them out. They are a great machine, a great dust collection to have. Far superior than this DIY sort of you know dust collection. Uh, this is a... Um, sort of like a cyclone that I built a long, long time ago, uh, along with this wind filter, um, which has worked great, but again, I, I don't, I'm not getting enough suction uh, to run all of my power tools. So that is a major upgrade that I'm super pumped about. So, all right, let's move over here to this side. Um, this is a shelf that I recently moved in here. It was more for organization purposes. I wanted to uh, uh, be able to house all of our acrylic sheets uh, that we run on the laser or the CNC. It's accumulated some junk up here, uh, as well as some boards that we keep up here. These are gonna get milled and processed uh, in the new shops. That's also something that we're super pumped about. Uh, so that's this shelf here. Uh, and we'll move over here to this dual router table. Um, if you come in closer, you can see the two plates that we offer. This one is the older six by six uh, insert plate, specifically for the trim routers. Uh, this specific one needs shims so that you could level it to your surface. You could still screw it down to kind of keep it in place, but it, you know, Having to add shims just makes it a little bit more difficult. So we improved on this version and made a larger seven by seven inch insert plate, also made for the trim router. The difference is that this one comes with four set screws, so you could adjust the height or the level so you could have it flush with your surface and you could still screw it down so that it doesn't move uh, while still maintaining that nice and flush um, uh, surface uh, and since we're here uh, I do have another sort of cyclone back here dust collection and this is this is just a shop vac attached to that which um, 
helps with the uh, dust collection here at the dual router table, uh, as well as the drill presses that we're going to talk about right now. So if we look over here, this is the drill press that I've had for a long time. It's a WEN 12 inch drill press. Um, it's not great. <laughs> it works. It serves its purpose, but, um, you know, it's, it's not the best drill press. This one is about $320, I believe, uh, on Amazon. I got it. And, um, it's, it's such a big difference between this and this drill press, which is the Nova Viking. This one is about $1,300. But when you compare features, I mean, it's not even a fair comparison. They're just on a different league. Um, but we got this one because of a specific need. With our insert plates and some of the other products that we sell, we needed to be able to tap the acrylic uh, so that we could use those set screws on the insert plates. This uh, Nova Viking, uh, you, could, you could reduce the RPMs all the way down to like 150 and you don't, you don't set it down to 150 to make the tap, but um, it's, it's pretty slow, meaning like 200, 250, somewhere in, you know, in that range. Uh, so you could you know, tap your holes, but the best feature about this one is that once it reaches the, the bottom of where you wanna tap, it'll reverse the chuck so that you could bring the, um, the tap back up. And so that was the main reason why we decided to get this drill press. Um, we haven't put it through its paces. Um, I'm sure it, it can do a lot more and we'll find out when we get to the new space because we're gonna utilize this um, for other, other things as well. So super pumped to have this one. This is one of the newer machines that we have in the shop. I think we've only had it for about three months or so. So that's the drill presses. Oh, real quick down here, we have a sander that used to live up here, but you know, we don't use it often right now, but we will, um, in a new space, we're going to move that, um, somewhere accessible so that we could use it and, uh, do a great job, um, or put it to, put it to work. If we move over here, uh, this is our planer. I've had this planer for about a year. Um, it's not cheap. This one is about 600 bucks. Uh, it has the stock knife, so it's a straight knife. I didn't upgrade to the helical. I was gonna upgrade. That upgrade, I believe, is about $350 just for the hel hel helical head. And I just wasn't convinced that this is the planer that I was gonna keep for the long run. So although I really enjoy this one, it's far superior from the other planer that I had, which was a WAN benchtop planer. That one sucked. And this one is an upgrade for sure. But I still have some issues with this one. One of them being that the, um, the panels that I run through, sometimes they get stuck, even though I've cleared out uh, or cleaned out the, the infeed and outfeed uh, tables and the bed inside. I've waxed it just to make it nice and smooth. I've cleaned out the rollers and it'll work for like a good few runs, but then it still gets caught up. And I've noticed it's happened with walnut primarily, uh, but it's also happened with maple and, uh, and even cherry. So I don't know what's up with it. It could be a user error. I don't know. The other thing I don't like about this one is that it has these, you know, foldable uh, in-feed and out-feed tables and they sort of misalign every now and again. So I have to go in there and readjust them. And so that's something that I really do not like. I'd rather have a long, sturdy, continuous bed to run the boards through. And uh, I'm just not completely satisfied with this one. So I may keep it as a backup um, or I may sell it. I don't know yet. Um, what I did do is I recently purchased that I a new planer that I have to pick up, uh, but it will be going to the new uh, shop. And that one is the Laguna PX16. So it's going to be a you know larger cut capacity and it's a way beefier machine. It has a helical head, so I'm super pumped about that. Um, but yeah, that's uh, another upgrade that we're making to the shop and I can't wait to get that one in um, as soon as we move. So 
that is that. So I'm gonna have you back up a little bit so I could talk a little bit about the uh, workbench here. So this is our assembly table. Uh, I love this thing. I built this thing way back, probably around the same time that I built the uh, shop cabinets uh, or the miter station. And I love it. The issue is that when you're in a two car garage and this is the usable space that we have, um, the larger it is, the less space we have for everything else. So this one is a three foot by five foot and it's not extremely large, but it's large enough where it limits our, our space around it. Um, normally the way we like to work is we'll have um, either that card over there or that card over there. And what we, use, what we do is we'll stack up all the plates uh, that we're working on and you know, depending on where we're working, like if we're processing on the CNC, we'll have the cart there, load all the plates, and then we'll move it over there to the router table or we'll move it to the drill press. And so we can just kind of move around, but this uh, large table limits our mobility with the cart as well as, you know, and we'll get to the drum sander and the uh, bandsaw, but all of these machines in a two car garage it just limits how, you know, how we move around the shop. So it makes it less efficient. And, um, you know, we're just kind of running out of space. So, but I love this thing. It's been a workhorse in the shop. And uh, this is one of our new products, uh, which is the sled kit. Um, we currently sell the trim router sled kit. Now we're upgrading it to the two and a quarter horsepower um, routers. And I can't wait to get this one out to the world because I think you guys are really going to like it. So uh, let's move over here to this side and we'll talk a little bit about the drum sander. Um, I love this thing. This thing is awesome. Actually, why don't you come over here on this side so that you could get a nice good look um, at, the, at the front of it. Um, so this is a 16 inch drum sander. This is the Laguna or Supermax. Um, it's the 32, it's a 1632 drum sander. Um, with this machine, we don't use it as often. We normally finish our boards here just to give it that nice and smooth finish. We have a uh, 220 grit sandpaper on here just to give it that final pass. Uh, you are gonna want dust collection on here. Um, it'll get all over the place if you don't. That's why we have this four inch um, flex hose. That's one of the things that we kind of struggle with because we have this flex hose and we normally connect, connect it over here on this side. Um, but then what that does is it gives us dust collection uh, for the drum sander or any of the other machines. But then this creates a trip hazard which is no good. Again, my fault because we never really invested the time in making, you know, running the proper duct and the drop down so that we could connect the, um, you know, all the, all the machines. But this is what we have to work with. It's not efficient at all, but it works for right now. The cool thing is that I could quickly disconnect uh, from any of the machines and connect to the other ones uh, and then just kind of drag this flex hose wherever I need it. But, um, lives here for right now. And these, if you're interested, these are the uh, mag port uh, quick disconnect. I'll put a link uh, in case you wanna pick some up. Uh, these things are awesome. In the new shop, uh, we will have dedicated lines so that we don't have to keep switching and swapping. We'll make use of these, we'll put them in other places, um, but we're hoping to have everything connected directly to the machines and we just open up blast gates, close blast gates and that kind of stuff. So um, that's the drum sander. And then the last major machine is gonna be our um, bandsaw. So this is the Laguna 1412. I don't get a whole lot of use out of this one uh, currently. I used to resaw some, some um, some wood on here. I used to have a three quarter inch blade, but I swapped it out because I was doing a lot more curves. So I needed something thinner so that I could make those curves on charcuterie boards and other, you know, items that I was kind of testing out or whatever. But um, this is a, a good solid machine. I just don't use it uh, to its full capabilities, but it works for us. 
Um, would I get it again? I don't know because even though it works, it's overkill for the way we use it. Um, but I do like it. I enjoy it. Uh, I did have some issues with the fence when I, when I had the fence on here and I had the three quarter inch um, blade. I wasn't getting perfect or anywhere near perfect widths on my resaws. So that was, you know, probably again, more of a user error because I know you have to properly align them and adjust them and, and get them dialed in. And it's just something that I never really took um, all that time to figure out and, and all that. So, um, but that's, you know, that's the Laguna 1412. Love this thing uh, other than that. And uh, it's going to the new shop as well. And uh, yeah, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about is this cart. Uh, this is the cart that we normally roll around uh, when we have our plates that we process from station to station. What I wanted to do is if you come over here on this side behind me, I did want to sort of show you why it's such a pain. Well, first of all, this thing is falling apart because we have some cables here. All right. So I'll try to roll it around. And it's basically to show you, basically to show you the limited space um, and what a, just what a mess it is trying to work and roll this thing around, uh, especially when you're hooked up to the uh, drum sander. If you're trying to bring it over here, I literally have to disconnect, wrap this around, get it out of the way, and now I could roll it this way. And even then, I only have about two feet uh, almost at every station. If we're here, you know, we load up the plates and then, you know, we try to bring it over here to this side. And so we have just enough gap here to bring it over here. Same over here on this side. So as you can see, it's just a very limited space um, getting around and moving around here to get to all the different stations. But uh, that's why we are moving into a new space. I did want to show you what we have currently because like I said, one, I never took the time to really show, uh, do like a little shop tour. So I wanted to do that. But also I do want to document sort of like us taking all of this stuff down moving it to the new space. And uh, I wanted to bring you guys along so you guys could uh, share in that experience and see how we set up the new space. Uh, again, it's gonna be more professionally installed over there because um, running, a, running a shop from your home garage is great. I mean, I did it for many, many years and it was fine. But when you're running a business, you want it to be a lot more efficient. And that's what we're working on now. Like I've been, in, um, I've been, uh, uh, you know, I've had this small business now for a little over two years and we had some of the stuff dialed in, but as we started growing, we realized that we need more space. We need more efficient, uh, processes. And so that's what we're working on now. So luckily we found a space. We're super pumped to get back, to get in there and get it all set up. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show you a quick tour of what we have now, and then we'll move over to the new space. Um, but with that said, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you want to follow along that journey, make sure you like this video and do all that good stuff. And, uh, I will catch you on the next one.